The Lord is the strength of his people, the saving refuge for the world he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, unless you are hated, and govern them forever. We gather today to lift our voices and prayers to him together as we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thoughts. I therefore I ask the Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Every name among you shall be circumcised. Sarah shall bear you a son. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 1, 9, 10, 15 to 22. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, and you, you and your descendants after you, throughout their generations. This is my covenant you shall keep. Between me, and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And God said to Abraham, You shall not call her name Salai, but Sarah shall be her name. I'll bless her. And moreover, I'll give you a son by her. I'll bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, O that Ishmael might live in your sight. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call him, and you shall call his name Isaac. I'll establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him 
As for Ishmael, I have cut you. Behold, I'll bless him and make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He shall be the father of twelve princes, and I'll make him a great nation. But I'll establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this season next year. When he had finished talking with, with him, God went, went up from Abraham. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. Indeed, thou shalt be blessed, the man who fears the Lord. Indeed, thou shalt be blessed, the man who fears the Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be blessed and prosper. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. In the end, thou shalt be blessed, the man who fears the Lord. Indeed, thou shalt be blessed, the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. In the end, thou shalt be blessed, the man who fears the Lord. Brethren, let us stand to welcome the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ took our infirmities and bore our disease. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hello, Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to the Lord. Lord, Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowd followed him, and behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is God, all the time, all the time, the Lord is good and has his nature. One of the most uh, painful things and places where we wouldn't love to be is the waiting room. To be in the waiting room, and the question would be, will I be attended to? Will I get exactly the share that I want? It is very painful. And it's in the pain in the waiting room that many people feel like giving up. Many people feel like quitting. Indeed, all people in the waiting room, there is a tendency of wanting to quit, to give up, because it is painful. You see that things are becoming too slow. And so you lose hope. You lose all the courage that you had, and you give up. And sometimes, if it's about prayer and you've waited for something for too long, there's a tendency of giving up. You lose hope completely. When you begin praying, sometimes you expect, or oh, I expect, that whatever prayer for you are needed to immediately within the shortest time possible, which sometimes doesn't happen. And so you ask yourself, 
But why is God taking too long to answer my prayers? Why is God not attending to me? I see others doing very well. Why me? Is it that I don't know how to pray well? Is it that God has given up on me? We need to go to the first reading of today. When God, you remember on Monday, the Lord appeared to Abraham when the man was 75 years old and he promised him a child. And Abraham, at 75, you can imagine, the wife should have been about 74. There were, there were just a different form of warrior between the husband and the wife. And God tells him of how his own child, not a child of a slave, would become the heir. Abraham waited on the Lord, not only for one, three, five, ten years, but he had to wait on the Lord for almost 25 years. From the reading of today, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. He was 99 by now. After the Lord appeared him for the first time at 75, making a promise of a child, the Lord now again comes to him when he was 99. And what does the Lord tell him? He tells him, by next season, but I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this season next year. That would mean that Abraham would be 100 years. That's why Abraham seen the kind of state he was in, that by next year he would be 100 and the wife would be 99. He said, Lord, a man of 100 a woman of 99, 25 years of waiting for the child. Dear friends, if you are not a man, a woman of faith, you give up. 25 appears to be too long a time. Wait for you, wait for me, I wait for only two days. When I pray for 10 days, I think it seems not to work out the way I expected. I give up. Abraham had to wait for 25 years for the promise that God had made to him to be fulfilled. What do we learn from the first reading of today, dear friends? We learn the aspect of waiting, learning to wait on the Lord. We must learn to be patient and to wait on the Lord, never to lose faith, never to lose hope, never to lose trust in God. When God promises, he will fulfill what he has made. The promises of because God is faithful. He has a plan for each and everything. The Lord shows us that even at 99, Sarah would bear a son. And God makes a covenant this time around, not only of giving the child, but also now changing the names from Abraham to Abraham, from Sarai to Sarah. And the Lord continues to lay down what is going to be, what's going to be entailed in the new covenant that is going to make with Abraham and the wife and then the child. And the, the prosperity, the blessings of Abraham because of his faithfulness to God will not only end with Abraham, but they will go down to generations and generations up to our present time that we still participate and share in the blessings of Abraham because of his faithfulness to God. We must learn, dear friends, to be faithful to God no matter the situation. It may be painful, we have waited for long, we feel like giving up, but we may never give up in the name of the Lord. We must always be there. We must learn to be there no matter what, no matter the situation. When the storms come, when the waves come, when mountains are standing our way, when there are rivers ahead of us, we must always learn that the Lord at an appropriate time, He will answer. At an appropriate time, the Lord will come. Just as Abraham, after 25 years of waiting, 
the Lord has told him to leave his home area, to go to another area of which he had settled. The man obeyed God in everything. In everything, Abraham obeyed God. We must also learn to obey and to listen to God in everything. As we become docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, let the will of the Lord be done in our lives. We surrender to Him because away from God, we are simply nothing. Away from Him, we can achieve nothing. There is no God, there is no dream that will be answered without the hand of the Lord in it. Abraham knew what the Lord, what to serve the Lord, what to remain near God means. We must always learn to be on the side of God, to obey God. Sometimes obedience is not easy. And yet, we learn it from Abraham when he listened to God and the Lord makes a new covenant. You see how Abraham, you know, even he laughed, he fell on his face and laughed. Even if it's you now, as they tell you at this age, you ask yourself, but is this possible? Humanly speaking, it is not. But God's ways are not man's ways. At 99, God is telling him by next year, when the man will be 100, your wife, by next year, the woman will be 99. It is a bit confusing. And yet we have to accept Abraham did not say, Lord, I have never seen that happen. He only accepted the will of God, knowing that God can do anything. Dear friends, we are told, when he had finished speaking with him, God went up from Abraham. The Lord ascended back to his throne, to his throne so that he may see the covenant and the promises that he had made with his people, Abraham. And as setting back on the throne is the way I pick from the first the gospel of today. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, when Jesus is found on the mountain, the gospel, the sermon on the mountain. Why the mountain? Jesus used to go to the mountain. To do what? To preach, to teach, and to pray to the Father. And from the time, each time he would come from the mountain, great things would happen. See how, after Jesus being up there, preaching, praying to the Father, talking to the Father, listening to the Father, he comes down and immediately he's encountered by and with this leper, a leper, a man who was not fit to be in society where there was social distancing like this one on this time around where you had to keep meters away from people so that you don't contaminate them there was isolation already started already way back in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament at the time of Jesus what we are doing now happened a long time ago each time you became a victim of leprosy you will not mix up with people. You will not go to churches anymore. No public appearances. You have to move with the bell. Life was so hard. It's like when well, now you are diagnosed and you are tested and you test positive. Everybody will feel you. Everybody will run away from you. Who wants to stay with you? You become, I mean, you, you scare everybody. Because once we come close to you, there was every contact also, God test. Life became so tough. And when this man, when he saw Jesus coming, he went and knelt down and said to him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Because he knew he had the power to heal. And that's why he said, if you will, you will make me clean. Jesus stretched his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately, the man was cleansed. That is the power. From Jesus, after Jesus being with the Father, that great power that he received, that anointing that he received, after being with the Father, he tells the man, only speaks, I will be cleansed, be clean, and be healed. And the man immediately is healed. 
Dear friends, we must also learn to get to the mountains of our homes, in the temple, in the chapel, in, before the blessed sacrament, around the family altars of all the time. We are, when we get to pray together as a family around, great things begin to happen. The Lord speaks to us in a way that after prayer, we don't remain the same. The power of the Lord begins and continues to work in and out of us. And then the Lord sends us out on a mission to go and serve other people. The Lord uses us that we may serve other people. But then the Lord also says, see that you don't tell anybody. Of course, even if you could not tell anybody, the people who knew him as a leper could easily see him that this something had happened to him. And definitely they would inquire. There are things that God does for you that you don't even need to tell others that the Lord has done this for me. By just people looking at him, they will know that great things have started to happen in your life. And who is behind this? It is God. But the Lord tells him another thing to go and show himself to the priest. Why? It is the priest who was supposed to clear him and to say, the brother is once more made clean. He's part of us. He's no longer in the other class or the outcast. He's now properly cleansed. And the Lord tells him to go to the priest as a command that was given by Moses. And also with a token of thanksgiving for what the Lord had done for him. To offer the gift that Moses commanded them for the proof of the people. The leper was supposed to go and offer himself and also with the offer, with the gift in thanksgiving as it had been commanded. We must learn to be grateful. We must learn to be thankful to God for all that he has been, for all that he has done. The Lord has been so good. The Lord has been so gracious. And so, like the leper, when we are looked at now, especially in this period of the COVID-19, when everybody, we are, scared, we are scared of each and everything. We are scared of everybody because the mask is on, they are, sad, they are washing and sanitizing all the time. We are social distancing from each other. Life is becoming a bit boring, stressful, but all the time, all the same, we have to remember that God still reigns. The Lord still reigns. The situation is under control. The Lord still is working behind the curtain. You may ask, but we have prayed and prayed and prayed. But why is God keeping silent? No, in his silence, the Lord is great, doing great things behind the curtains. After 24 years, 25 years of waiting, Abraham received his own child, and Sarah received the son Isaac. We pray, dear friends, today that we may learn to listen, to wait, to obey, and also to be thankful to God for all that he has made. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received. The bread will offer you fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, indeed, Lord, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received. The wine will offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual trade. Blessed be your 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the children. Receive, O oh Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your blood, Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your whole people, he stretched out his hands as a new and his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Glory, glory, glory is the Lord, God of us. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest. Blessed is moment of the Lord appearing to his people as we continue to give thanks to the Lord for the gift of life that he has given our brother Simon who is celebrating his birthday today as we read the species of the bread and the wine in thanksgiving for his love and for the life that he has given him we pray that the Lord may continue to shower upon him more blessings good health and support in all that he does success and blessings upon his family and upon his life. You by indeed you holy, O Lord, the vote of all of holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection and until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks. You heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and the blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, the strength of the world, and bring that from the subjectivity. Father of Francis, our Pope, Charles Brother, the Bishop, and Paul the Pledge. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in hope of your resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them with light of the peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now, may the blessed Virgin Mary, Mary, and God, and our Lord, Saint Joseph, may the blessed apostles, the Holy Saints, who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may make people have eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him and within him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever 
and ever. Amen. As I say, dear Thomas, and copy by the divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Amen. First Lord, we pray for every evil, gracious and grand peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us offer each other the peace of the risen Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Beloved friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you remain under my roof, but only say one, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us life eternal.
the eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Having finished the nine day prayer, nine days prayer of the novena that we concluded on the other day, Wednesday night, uh, we are going to start again uh, another prayer of seven days. It's a Jacob prayer. Uh, a Jacob prayer, which is going to start tonight at midnight. Tonight at midnight, we are going to start another prayer, which is going to be for seven days. We shall always get the updates and so what we are supposed to do during on each day. We shall be keep you posted on our page of Rubaga Student Center. So just keep there. But this time we are going to get our teachings from the book of Joshua, chapter six. We request you to keep reading. Start already reading, going through this chapter six of the book of Joshua. We are going to focus on the family vis-a-vis -vis the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to pray. We need to lift our prayers, join our efforts, our hands together to pray for our families. In all things that are, that we want to pray for in this world, we need to lift and to pray for our families every day. And so now we, want, we are going to focus on the family vis-a-vis -vis the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are starting tonight. For those who have not yet joined, you can inbox me and then I add you on the team. It's going to be a 24 hour prayer that every hour, at every top of the hour, we get a new person or a group signing in and another group signing up. 24 hour prayer like it was in the previous novena. So we want to issue a fruitful, a nourishing, and a wonderful encounter with the Lord. And uh, today, our brother, senior brother, is celebrating his birthday. It was on this day, on the 25th of June that year, that he was brought into this world. And our practice is that we join those who are celebrating life. And so please, may you come in front here, and then I tell you what we shall do. Just come over here, right here. Yeah, I think the camera also will see you well. Uh, so you just stand right here, and uh, somebody with a good voice. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Lord, we pray for him 
May you bless him abundantly. Bless his dreams. Bless his family. Bless his work. That is as he executes his work that you have entrusted him, that he may do your will on earth. We may you continue to guide him. Bless his dreams every day of his life. May he be a faithful father. May, be, may he be a faithful head of the family. And we bless the future. May you accompany him, walk ahead of him and behind of him. May he share in the favors that you promise to those who serve you faithfully. May we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To our brother, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. May God continue to bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And your mighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass is ended. Go to love and serve the Lord. The Lord be to God. Have a blessed and a spirit-filled new day. Amen. Amen.